Welcome to this YSL video tutorial. In this lesson we're going to teach you how to write basic queries in Microsoft SQL Server. The things we'll cover in this session are things like how to change useful settings in the Management Studio application to make your query writing as easy as possible, how you can add comments to your code to make sure that you can remember what you've done months later when you look at your queries again. We'll talk about the basic query structure involving the two main SQL keywords. We'll show you how you can add an alias to a field to give your column headings more sensible titles. And finally, to save you tearing your hair out, we're going to show you a few of the common mistakes people make when writing basic SQL queries. So let's get started. So here we are in SQL Server Management Studio and we're ready to start writing some new queries. Before I get stuck into that, I'd like to make a few changes to some of the settings of SQL Server Management Studio, things that will hopefully make your query writing life that little bit easier. So to do that, head to the Tools menu at the top of the screen and find Options. That will unsurprisingly open the Options dialog box. And the first thing I'm going to change is something about the font size, hopefully to make it easier for you guys to read watching on screen. So if I head to the environment section and the fonts and colors option. I can simply change the font size by clicking the drop down arrow. Uh, I'm going to make it relatively large, make it as clear for you guys as possible. So there we go. Um, I'm also going to turn on some line numbering as well. Line numbers appear at the left hand side of your query and help you identify where errors are happening in your code. So to do that, I'm going to head to the text editor tab and choose all languages. And there should be a simple checkbox for line numbers. The last feature I'd like to quickly mention is something called IntelliSense. It's a bit of a silly name. Some people call it um, autocomplete. And it's a feature that was added to SQL Server 2008. It's a handy thing to have. It helps you to complete sentences. So you, you don't have to type in a complete sentence. You can select options from a list which appears. Now, by default, it's turned on. Some people I know find it hugely annoying and prefer to type out all their code longhand. So just in case you did ever want to turn it off, head to the Transact SQL section and then look for the IntelliSense option. And if you wanted to disable it, you can uncheck this box. I actually find it quite handy, so I'm going to leave mine turned on and you'll be able to see what effect that has shortly. So to accept all those settings, simply click OK. And now we're finally ready to start writing some queries. When you're ready to start writing queries, there are two main ways you can do it. One is to head to this tempting looking new query button up in the top left hand corner and click on that. Alternatively, you can hold down the control key on the keyboard and press N for new. Both techniques will perform exactly the same action. You'll end up with a new query window taking up most of your screen. And here are the line numbers I was talking about earlier. These will continue building up as I type in more text. I want to quickly introduce you to the database we're going to be working on for this example. So if I head over here to the uh, Object Explorer window and expand the database folder for the server that I'm connected to, there's a movies database in here. If I expand the movies database, there's a tables folder in here and finally a list of all of my tables. And these are the things we're going to be working on. I'm going to start by writing some queries based on the film table so it gives me some data about what films are stored in the database. Before I start writing the actual query itself, it's useful to add comments. Comments are a fantastic idea in programming. They give you a hint or a reminder when you come back to look at your code six months later on. They give you a reminder about what's been going on in your queries or what you intended to do. And also for other people looking at your code, it helps them as well. So in SQL, you can start a query by typing in two dashes. On that same line then, whatever I type in next is simply a comment. Um, Here's a really interesting comment, not particularly informative I know, but you can make your comments much more informative than that. In SQL Server you can also add multiple line comments, so if I hit enter to the next line now. To start a multi-line comment, type in a forward slash and an asterisk. I'm then going to hit enter a couple of times and type in an asterisk and a forward slash, and that closes my multi-line comment. So anything I write between these two lines um, will be a comment. So this is something where you can create things like created by wise owl, uh, show a list of films. So that might be a useful comment about what this query does. 
I'm going to select and delete that top comment. A quick note about uh, one of the new features in SQL Server 2008, something called outlining. When you create blocks of code, SQL Server automatically recognizes that things should go in a block and creates these little collapsible sections. This is outlining. You can actually turn this feature off if you don't like it. I'm going to leave mine turned on for now. I think it's quite useful. So finally, having added some comments, we can finally get into writing our queries properly. The most basic type of query you can write in SQL involves two main SQL keywords. The first is called SELECT, which I've typed there in all caps. Capital letters aren't necessary in SQL Server, it's um, completely case insensitive, but it is good practice to put SQL keywords in all caps. You'll spot them because they're also highlighted in blue. If I hit enter a couple of times, the next main keyword I want to use is the FROM keyword. Now the FROM keyword, slightly oddly in SQL, you don't necessarily write your code in the order it's read back. Particularly in this version of SQL, when you want to use these um, IntelliSense lists that I was talking about, sometimes it makes sense to fill in later parts of the statement before you fill in earlier parts. So what I'd like to do with this FROM statement is to refer to a particular table, it's one called TBL Film. Now normally, had I done a couple of extra things, if I started typing TBL to look for the word TBL Film here, it would appear in the list. The reason it hasn't appeared yet is because at this point, my query isn't related to any particular database. It's defaulted to the master database of this server. So I'm going to backspace TBL Film for the time being. There are two ways to associate your query with a particular database. Now, one is to simply select from this drop down list from one of the databases that's stored on the server. If I choose movies here, what will happen when I go back to my from statement and start to write in TBL, you now see that it's populated with a list of tables from that database, which is really handy. This is why I love this, the IntelliSense list. It just makes typing errors so much less common. And it's also great for lazy people like me who don't like typing at the best of times. Um, to type in this highlighted word, now I can either press um, return or enter, or I can double click on it with the mouse. Um, I'm going to press the tab key actually to type in my highlighted word. Another way to associate a query with a database, if you don't remember to select the database from the list, it can be more useful to write a statement at the top of the query. So before you start selecting records, you can tell this query to use a particular database. And here again, the IntelliSense list appears to show me a list of movies. This time I'm going to double click on the word movies to enter that. So there we go. I've told my query to use movies. I want to select some fields from this particular table. Now, for people who use SQL Server 2005 or earlier, you won't have this lovely IntelliSense list. So I want to show you a neat little trick you can use to avoid having to type things in. I'm going to remove the word TBL film here. And instead of typing it in at all, I'm going to show you that you can actually drag names from the Object Explorer. So I can simply drag TBL film from the left hand side to the right. And there we go. One slightly different thing that it does is it adds a qualifier to the start of the table name. In DBO, this is also this is known as the, the schema, is not particularly important for the sorts of basic queries we're writing. Um, but be aware that it doesn't make any difference for us whether it's there or not at this early stage. So the next job is to start listing some fields. You add fields to a query after the select keyword. So I'm going to click under there just now and press tab to indent my code one space again. If I know the names of my fields, I can simply start typing them in and the beautiful IntelliSense feature will appear again to prompt me with uh, with what my field names are. So I know that all the fields in this table begin with the word film. So I can select film name from the list now by pressing enter or tab. There we go. Now after the first field that you enter, you must use a comma to separate each subsequent field that you add. There's a bit of a debate about whether you add comments to the end of a line and then carry on typing in your field names on the next line like so, or whether you prefer to hit enter and then add a comma at the start of each line. 
I'm actually in favor of the second method. Um, it's just what I've got used to. But honestly, it genuinely doesn't matter to SQL Server whether you add comments at the end of a line or at the start. Just make sure you've got them there. So I'm going to start carrying on writing in the, uh, the field names. The next one I'm going to go for is film release date. And then hit enter and comma. And just a quick hint for people who don't have access to the IntelliSense feature. You don't have to type in your field names in the same way you didn't have to type in your, your table names. If I expand the film table and then expand the columns folder, I can find a list of all of my fields and once again just simply click and drag to put them into the query. So there we go, there's a very very simple query that selects three fields from one single table. The last thing I need to do now in order to make this work is to actually execute it. And again, I can do that in a couple of different ways. I can either click the Execute button at the top of the screen, or I can simply press the F5 key on the keyboard. Whichever method you choose, your query results should be returned to the grid at the bottom. Once you've run a query, it's quite possible that you'll want to make changes. So for instance, one thing I'd like to do is I'd like to modify the field names, or the, at least the column headings at the top of my results. To do that, I can add an alias to my fields. So before I start adding my alias, a quick neat keyboard shortcut for you. If you want to temporarily remove the results pane from view, hold down the control key and press R on the keyboard, and that just removes the results pane temporarily. So to add an alias to a field, the simplest way possible is to type in a space after the name of a field and then type in the new name that you would like that field to have in the results. So I'm simply going to call film name title. If I run my query again, I can hit the execute button. You can find that film name has been replaced with the word title. I'm going to press control R again to get rid of that results pane. Now that method is really simple and straightforward when you're alias doesn't contain a space. But here I'd like to call my next field. I want to alias it as the title released on. Now unfortunately, because I've used a space between those two words, SQL isn't happy with that. So what I need to do is enclose these two words inside one of two things. Either a set of single quotes, which turns them bright red, or a set of square brackets. Either or, it genuinely doesn't matter, it's a bit of personal preference here. So if I run this query again, I'm going to press F5 this time. I can see that I get released on as the title for this field. One last thing I should mention, sometimes it's nice if I just get rid of the results pane. It's nice actually sometimes if you indicate that you're using an alias with this keyword as. Now you can clearly see that it's not necessary to add that in there. It works perfectly well without the as keyword. This is one of the rare occasions where I'd actually do more typing than I'm required. I'm quite lazy in, in the real world when it comes to typing. Um, but this is one thing that I do think is worthwhile indicating that you're using an alias by adding the keyword as. So I'm going to add one more there now at the bottom as a duration, let's call it. So that's my preferred way of adding an alias to a field. If I run this one last time, you get some nice, sensible, almost plain English headings for your columns. So just before we wrap up this tutorial, I think it'd be nice to show you a few things that can commonly go wrong. There's a few mistakes that people commonly make that are well worth highlighting, just to help you avoid making them yourself. So one of the common ones is, if I add a new line here and a new comma, I'm gonna drag a new field name into my query. When you drag field names like this, SQL leaves the text highlighted. And if I immediately then try to execute my query, the Management Studio application tries to execute just the selected text. So it's trying to execute a query that consists of the text Phil Mosca wins and get used to seeing these horrible red error messages down at the bottom here. The important point here is that it highlights the word Phil Mosca wins. So that gives you a clue that there's something wrong with that part. If I simply click into a blank part of the query and then press F5 to run the query again, the results come out sensibly. Another common mistake people make is if you're not using the drag and drop system, or sometimes if you're using the Intelli uh, not using the IntelliSense system, then it's easy to accidentally mistype or misspell field names. I get a nice little squiggly red underline to indicate that I've already mistyped my field name here, but just to show you what effect that would have if I try to run the query again, Again, another horrible red error message. Fairly sensible one in this case, invalid column name film Oscar win, so that gives you a clue that there's a problem there. And also using the line numbers, it helps you to quickly identify where the error is. 
The quickest and easiest way to highlight an error, however, is to double click on the error message text. If I double click, it will highlight in my script where the error lies. One final common mistake people make. Missing a comma or adding too many commas is almost always a comma. When you get an error message, the fault is almost always with a comma when you first start writing your queries. If I omit a comma from this, the start of this field and then run my query, in correct syntax near film Oscar win, I get the error on line 11 and I can highlight that again. If I added in too many commas, which is another common mistake, particularly when you're adding commas at the end of a line rather than at the beginning, it's easy to accidentally add an extra comma at the end of the last line. Again, if I try to run this one, I get yet another error message. Slightly oddly, the line numbers don't always quite match. Here it's saying there's an error on line 12 near the keyword from. The actual error is on line 11. Um, so sometimes you have to search up or down a little bit from where the error message is pointing you to. So just be wary of that. So those are a few of the most common mistakes people make. And I still make some of them myself. So if you find those are happening, use the error message to help you spot what the problem is and hopefully how to fix it. If you've enjoyed this training video, you can find many more online training resources at www.wiseowl.co.uk.